Hello, everybody, and welcome to our interview session with Reset Revolution. Today, I'm joined with Guy and Yaya, um, who will be talking about how the Western ideas of the IV. If y'all want to just go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. So, hi, my name is Yaya. I am 17 years old, and I'm currently going to school at the International Community School of Abidjan in the Ivory Coast. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Guy. Um, I'm 18 years old, and I am also a senior, like Yaya, at the International Community School of Abidjan. Perfect. So as I said earlier today, well, I'm also an IB student and these two are as well. So they're going to be comment, they will be commenting about the larger aspects of how Western the IB is and the entire curriculum is despite being said that it's an international baccalaureate. Um, so right before we get to the actual interview session, can you explain to me what specifically Westernized um, curriculums actually mean? Um, maybe Guy, if you want to talk about that. Of course. Yeah, sure. I think in my mind, westernized is more, in my view, like a curriculum that's been, I guess, like centered on European or often American accomplishments. And I think so a lot of what we learn, a lot of what we read is, you know, produced, created, founded upon the ideals of normally white people. And I think there's, there's a lack of representation in terms of accomplishments or information that have been discovered or uncovered by people of color, especially. Mm -hmm, perfect. Um, so what specific incidents made you realize that the IB itself was Western? Um, Jaya, mm -hmm. do you wanna, do you wanna go with that? Yes. So I am an IB history student. I do history at the HL level. And so I realized that the IB was pretty Westernized when I was talking to my friend about how little they provide resources for students who are not doing like the gener generic history topics. Like for example, we were doing rights and protests and we we're talking about independence movement in um, the US and in South Africa. And outside of that other topics, we we're talking about independence of Zimbabwe, of India, just of a lot of British colonies. And we felt like because the IV has for so long put a lot of uh, emphasis on like these Western countries and their history and kind of neglected other parts of the world that there are not as many resources for us IB students to go and help us with so I feel like a lot of the time the content that I struggled with was because there wasn't enough due to this westernized ideal ideologies that the IB has implemented within their curriculum for so long. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting because I also take history higher level and because we live in Europe as well, I think it's more adaptable and more adjustable to, you know, the Western, um, because if we learn about, you know, the USSR and stuff, it makes sense to a degree, you know, about how it had an effect on Western Europe. But I feel like if you're living in the African continent, you should learn about, you know, Zimbabwe, as you talked about, or maybe even the history of Ivory Coast. Um, so it's really interesting that you talk about the resource scarcity in that area. Um, Guy, do you have anything else? you want to comment about on specific incidents? Yeah, I think um, what Ye was touching upon was actually um, more like the content and the resources, I guess, in, a, in, in the way that because they're more catered towards the Western, a Western audience or a Western student, um, it might be difficult for people who aren't as familiar with, you know, the uh, United States history or again, like this history of USSR or Russia or whatever it may be. I think uh, I could bring up another aspect, which uh, is part of my IB biology class. Um, so I take uh, biology at a high level. And one thing that I've noticed is that this is going to go back to like the accomplishments and the history and the, uh, I guess the things people have discovered. But a lot of the experiments, a lot of the knowledge that's being published onto these IB textbooks are primarily, you know, uh, discovered through like white people or, or Western people, I guess, or the Western world. And there's and I, it kind of came as a shock to me because I know that there are so many incredible and talented people who have made, you know, huge movements in science or history or whatever it may be. And they're often not printed onto these textbooks as if their accomplishments aren't important to the IB or, or maybe they just thought that it's not worth putting it on their textbook when compared to, you know, maybe like John Karen's autoradiography, you know, measuring cr um, chromosomes, which is important, which is important. But sometimes I do feel a little bit sad to not see enough representation of maybe like Asian people or African-American people or African people, you know, just in general. There's just not enough representation of someone who I could relate to. 
and say, wow, like this person did an amazing thing. So yeah, that's just my opinion, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. And this idea of representation, I think, is really important. Um, both of you are people of color that currently attend, you know, an international school um, and uh, participate in the IB as well. So I think another really important aspect of this, at least from my experience, is the English curriculum and what books you read. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and comment about that. Um, yeah. Personally, I like the books that we've read so far in our curriculum because most of them were chosen by like minority people, were written by like minority people. Like we've had um, a Nigerian author, we've had a Pakistani author, and um, Tikana author. And I think that's really great, but they all kind of center again on like imperialism and colonialism and I feel like for once it would be nice especially as a black person you know and as an African person it would be nice to read African literature that isn't centered on the repercussions of colonialism in Africa so I feel like this it's always coming back to like what Europe's role was in history and I personally I would like to see more of just Africans being Africans without this legacy of colonialism always underpinning the plots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really interesting, um, especially because, you know, I live in Belgium and it, ha and it has a history of colonialism itself. And the fact that we, well, we don't even get to learn about how Belgian parties play played a role within colonialism to begin with. And I think that's also a really to like important topic. Like you're saying, you like history doesn't begin with colonialism, obviously. And you have to go back before that. But I also think as a European country too, we have to go back and revisit colonialism in a way that you guys in a different sense are doing right now. And yeah, I think that's also really, really important. As students currently attending an African international school, and as I said earlier, you guys are both students of color, um, how important do you think it is to revisit the ideals of westernization in the IB? And do you think they actually have a sense of idea, like an idea that they are a very Western organization? Mm -hmm. I would say like the point, a lot of international schools do make it a point to emphasize like the diversity and how they appreciate their host countries. But I think also it kind of creates a bubble sometimes, you know? So um, especially if you talk about IB and leading to CAS, right? It creates this idea that you have to help someone just to get it done, right? And sometimes I feel like it can contribute to a little bit of a savior complex. But, you know, like I feel like it's important obviously to like recognize where you are and the people that are like surrounding your community outside of the school. And I feel like international schools need to do a better job with that. Our school um, does have a bunch of programs with like local schools, which I think is really great. So I feel like if other schools kind of followed that, it would be so much better to kind of pop that bubble that's been created in a sense. Yeah, Guys. absolutely. Um, yeah, um, I guess if there's another thing, you know, as an Asian student attending an international school here in Cote d'Ivoire, um, this is actually just a recent incident, but we were just doing mock exams for the IB exams. Um, and I was taking my Japanese A uh, literature paper. And I was surprised to see that no one prepared a, you know, because in Japanese, you write from right to left, top to bottom. And there was no paper prepared for me to kind of write in that manner. And I was very, I mean, like, I wasn't surprised because obviously, you know, this school is still new. They're not used to having different languages for exams. But when I asked, can I, you know, have a specialized paper for that? They said, well, no, can't you just, you know, write left to right? And I guess that was something I was like, oh, like maybe, you know, we still, there are still some things that we need to focus on as an international school and as a community as well. It's like sometimes because we're so set on being able to ad adapt ourselves to the Western ideals or Western curriculum that we often forget that, you know, it's still important to uphold your own identity or your own ideologies, your own culture. And I think that, you know, while we should revisit the curriculum, like I said, it's still also important to revisit, I guess, the international schools community as well, like as a whole. Yeah. I think you said some really important stuff there. Well, firstly, I just want to look at what Yaya said with, um, you know, um, this idea of superiority, saviorism. Um, and I think it really comes up 
um, with this international school bubble, especially, um, especially in like, you know, an international school where people are already privileged. It, it takes a lot of money to go to the schools that we do. Um, so it's like, this idea that you just to get the diploma you're forced to like this idea of being good-hearted is just completely gone you know what I mean because here you go out and help out a bunch of refugees and you can obviously tell that it's white saviorism because all of the of all of the kids that attend my school are white so if you go to a refugee shelter with that are filled with you know refugees from Afghanistan Syria Pakistan all these places it's obviously white saviorism like you can't deny that so i think you really bring up an important point right there and this idea of you know how international schools um, they just have to revisit the idea of how they can value one's own identity is also really important because i feel like a lot of the time international schools try to make sure that they can adapt um, and adapting meaning like not identifying the differences, but rather creating more similarities just to like eliminate all the differences. Um, so I think that's that's a really important thing that you brought up. Yeah, throughout, I don't know how long you guys are at Cote d'Ivoire, but did you ever get to learn about your country's or like your residing country's history or like, you know, the local environment? Um, well, I had to learn about that from like the people around me you know like I when I first came here to Côte d'Ivoire and I would have to ask my friends like what's going on and then they would tell me about all their experiences or I would go out myself to you know learn about any political history that happened and I feel like that also is something that maybe the school could have done better so then at least people coming in like understand where they are like the history of their country because even one of our teachers who used to be here would tell us that like when she came here she had no idea about the political history of Cote d'Ivoire which has been somewhat turbulent and so she hadn't been told anything and like the repercussions of that history have still been seen today so she was like I wish they had told me something so I could maybe be make a more informed decision. How about like what languages did they provide at your school? Are there any native languages that are provided there or do you know? Okay, well then I guess that also says a lot too, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you think the school would ever allow the, the native language there to be like taught, like in general? Uh, <laughs> well, here's the thing, I think there's only so much that students can advocate for, I guess, because at the end of the day, the decision of implementing or introducing a new course comes down to the IB coordinator. But then even beyond that, ultimately, it comes into the hands of the board and the administration. And I think that especially in smaller, newer international schools and IB schools, the priorities are often not, you know, try to expand our course as much as possible or to be more inclusive. I guess it's the priority, you know, as any new school, the priority is to how can we accelerate our program? How can we get more people to join? How can we get more people to, okay, if it was in the terms of the IB, how can we get more people to score higher overall? How can we boost our average grade for classes? And I think when we start discussing those things, especially as a new international school or a new IB school, sometimes, you know, the administration will make decisions where they will not prioritize things like inclusivity or to try to incorporate, you know, more local languages or, you know, just foreign languages in general. And so I think there is definitely this big bridge or the big gap, I guess I should say, of older, more established IB schools and newer, you know, IB schools, especially in developing countries, because the resources there compared to already developed and westernized nations, like the resource gap is huge, right? So I think there's so many factors that, you know, unfortunately, we can't, like as students, we don't have control over. Mm -hmm. And I think that may be, you know, a dis much needed discussion that's going to have to take place as globalization continues to happen, I guess, yeah. I think it also comes down to, again, this idea of westernization and like 
how the world is today. Like guys, said, you have a lot of globalization. So everyone is expected to at least know a little bit of English if you want to make it in the workforce someday. Because, you know, like the United States, Britain, like they're all English speaking countries that are world powers. And so this idea that there are some languages that you need to know over others, you know, like it also comes down to that. So I guess that would be a factor in the decision. Like, do people really need to learn Baule in order to advance in life? Or is that something they can do like on their free, in their free time? Like, yeah, like there are some things that we can't control that are obviously a consequence of where you live, but that doesn't mean you should just leave it at that I think it's still important to be to understand that you know there are going to be a few people who are not going to follow the status quo of you know wherever you are whatever you're learning and so that may be an important conversation that you know people should keep having because there are there are certainly at this international school that we go to people are very aware and people are very willing to have these difficult conversations that people often try to skip over because it makes people uncomfortable or it's something that people think is better left unsaid. Um, so yeah, I think like we're doing here, like talking about it, I think is a really important step to, you know, being able to kind of overcome the barriers of race or, you know, ethnicities or religion or anything like that, I guess, yeah. Yes, so conversation is definitely the most important thing that one can do, especially as students. Um, and as you said earlier, students can only do so much and the rest is really up to um, curriculum changes that are obviously done by those that are in power, faculty, IBO, all of that. So it's not much we can really do um, in terms of us as students, but I think the conversation is moving forward. So anyways, thank you so much for joining me today and we hope to see you next week. Thank you for having us. Bye-bye.